Something is happening. Yeah, looks good. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so let's start. So, uh, hi to everyone. Uh, I am Cruz Borges, the project coordinator of Y Project. And I'm going to try to present today uh, the result of um, our stakeholder consult consultation uh, process that we have been carrying out from six months until now. Uh, I'm going to try to stick to the, the time frame, but let's see if I can get it. So first, <coughs> the key as yes, uh, for a couple of uh, slides to remind of the uh, summary of why for all of you that you can have not uh, in in the in the project. I mean, is you are not so very knowledge of the project. So the objective of why is to improve the assessment of energy consumption trends on household by including causal models in leading energy system models. So what we wanted to, to assess is uh, how is going to develop the energy system in the future, uh, taking focusing on these four aspects, the energy efficiency, the distributed generation, the demand response, and, and the electrification of services, uh, mainly only focusing on household. Okay, so we are narrow a little bit the, the scope. So we are going to use uh, a very interesting approach, this causal models, that is uh, a new modeling things that is, as Nives has said, is uh, a way to overcome the use of randomized control trials. And it's models built using an expert knowledge are not data driven and form a theory. So you need to uh, validate the theory, it's not the other way around, okay? And the way that they look is uh, a causal diagram <clears throat> when you set a set of equations between different variables or construct, and you just write equation between the different constructs. So you have two steps. First, you need to define as a theory this causal diagram, and then you need to fit each one of the arrows. Okay, so it's a, a two-step process to 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 adjust this this kind of models. And when we complete this type of model, what we are going to do is to follow a bottom-up modeling approach when we are going to go from modeling a person, well, a house, and then we are going to model, let's say, the services, electrical services of a house. I mean, we start with the behavioral behavior, then go to the electrical part, and then we upscale until we reach the energy system model, whatever energy system model we need. Okay. So we are going to test uh, in five proof of concepts. Uh, we are going to test in a microgrid, in an energy cooperative, in a city, in a uh, European Y, and also in a global Y. And each one of them has uh, different aspects. For example, the microgrid, what we are going to try to, to assess is how people are going to behave under a blackout, a blackout uh, process that you obviously don't have data for that. Uh, for the energy cooperative, for example, one of the main focus is going to be the new tariff that are going to be implemented in Spain uh, in a short notice. And for Bilbao, European and the global scenario, it's a more traditional one where we are going to uh, assess, let's say, a uh, different policy intervention that you can do uh, to foster this the energy transition. Okay, so let's go to our results. So we do a Rustuhol consultation. We first, we identify uh, some uh, stakeholders that we wanted to, to interview or to consult. Uh, we have to identify, uh, if I remember, like 70 or something like that. Uh, 14 policy models, modeling expert, 16 energy expert, and 33 end user results. And we have, uh, done several actions. Mostly the most important ones are the interviews because if the ones that where we can get uh, more information and the focus group and the surveys have not worked so well. So our main results is we have used uh, the personas methodology. So from the interviews, we extract these archetypal persons that are the main users of or the tools that we are going to develop. So we have identified five of them. Uh, we have Elena, that is a traditional modeler, mostly uh, from the academia, probably, that works uh, in decision-making, helping authorities and private business. 
Then we have Max that works for uh, for the industry, for uh, for some utilities or this type of things, and is the expert uh, on that on modeling and planning on new infrastructure and this type of, of action. Then we have Paula that is a policy advisor. He is more in a think tank or this type of, of, uh, of companies or, or enterprise and, and works directly for, team, um, for policymakers or, or helping policymakers. Then we have Markel that is, a, that is something similar to Nives or something like that. It's a more a public authority and, and it works for a public authority and it's responsible for, for drafting and negotiating new legislation and regulation. It's, it's more in, in, let's say, they are the, the policy makers, okay? And then we have Alex and Andrea that is just a working couple that, uh, that is very interesting on, on sustainable future for the kids and uh, it's, it's a general population persona. Let's say so. We have the five of them, and this is an interesting point because we need to we we wanted to try to to consider of them in all the things that we wanted to do, and and trying to do tools for each one of them. Then we have uh, five uh, five main technical use cases, but one of them is split in three because it's depending on, on who is at the, who is the the most important one. We have uh, the first one. Uh, it's basically <clears throat> the main uh, use case is the, the, the traditional one that is running the, the entire model from one point to another one. But it's, the main difference is, is who is going to run the model. It's, if this is a policy interesting, it's uh, just for new business or for new technologies, or if you are going to do it in a teaching, um, teaching way, let's say. Then we have the second one is uh, the assessment of contrafactual scenario. It's basically uh, having running the uh, or knowing the future what has happened in the future trying to derive a business as usual scenario or the other way around if we have made this type of intervention in the past what would have happened it's quite interesting from <clears throat> for uh for tracking if things are going uh, the right way then we wanted to Create more precise law for a castle law projections. Uh, this is one of the main interests of the project. And then we wanted to also understand what is happening. Uh, what are the what are the mental process that derive the, the, the energy consumption on the investment decision? And then we wanted to have <clears throat> trying to optimize policy intervention to fulfill a policy objective. This is the five, let's say, use cases, main use cases. And then from all these interviews we have getting from here and from there, uh, what are the requirements? I mean, the different uh, constraints, models that we need to take, uh, the intervention that we need to incorporate and then how we can to present the results. Uh, there's a lot of them, almost 100. And um, well, we have taken from, <laughs> uh, from very basic one, like for example, that we need to consider different uh, countries. So very, very detailed one that you need to use Python for your modeling <laughs> system. So, and then we have other more uh, across the, the world. So I'm not going to just talk too much here. So with all of this in the cocktail, we go to the blackboard and say, okay, how we can solve all, all of this. So uh, we have defined, let's say a pseudo code of how we are going to run uh, our simulations. So the first point is we are going to try to identify energy behavior profiles, let's say, we are going to forget about the socioeconomic uh, profile and this type of things, and we are going to just see how people are behaving from the energy point of view. So we are going to take a lot of load profiles uh, from the smart meters, and we are going to see, okay, what are the different behavior, what are the different uh, shapes people are behaving? And from that, we are going to, we are trying, or we are in the process of extracting uh, behaviors, okay? And then our idea is to create two maps, one from the energy behavior to the socioeconomic profile and the other way around from the socioeconomic profile to the energy behavior. And this is going to help a lot in order to build the scenarios because we can build a scenario from the socioeconomic profile or build a scenario from the energy behavior profile from one point to the other point, okay? And from these maps created, uh, we are going to go to the next one that is create a scenario. And those maps are helpful in order to create the scenarios because sometimes you have socioeconomic profiles 
and you wanted to get energy behavior profiles. And sometimes you have energy behavior profiles and you wanted to need, you need socioeconomic profile in order to run your model, okay? So the first thing is, okay, you set the scenario, a traditional scenario uh, from, from the model. And then we are going to, what we are going to do is for each energy behavior profile, we are going to try to know what are the energy investment that they are going to, to uh, each person in the energy behavior profile. I mean, uh, what are the this investment decisions that they are going to make? And what are going to be their behavior towards the energy? Okay, are going to uh, change uh, the energy consumption to till night, they are going to buy an electric vehicle, are going to install solar panels. And if they install solar panels, what are the control setting that they are going to put uh, on the inversor? They are going to put a battery and okay, if they put a battery, what are the optimization code that they are going to deploy into the battery? Is just maximization of cell consumption or is the, the, um, the maximization of return of on the investment or, or I don't know, crazy things like uh, charge uh, during morning and discharge during night, uh, I don't know. Uh, what, are the, the, what are going to be the configuration of these people on those type of devices, given the, the, the policy framework and the, the, the incentive that they are going to be framed. Okay, and with all of this configuration made, for each energy behavior, what we are going to do is to simulate the, the behavior during one year with a very detailed resolution, a quarter hour resolution, uh, and see what is going to happen. And we are going to do several times for each energy behavior profile in order to have a distribution of their behavior. And from all this distribution for each energy behavior, we are going to take an upscale system and we are going to try to simulate what is going to happen from, let's say, 10 person, 10 or 10 person per energy behavior profile. And we go to trying to scale until hundreds or, or thousands or whatever you need in order to plug into the energy system model. And then we just run the energy system model that usually are a much bigger uh, scale, okay? And from that, we get some macroeconomic results and uh, uh, distribution of energy across Europe and this type of information. And from that, we feedback to the uh, to the energy behavior profile and run again and see what it's happening until we reach the end year. Okay. So this is more or less the pseudo code of what we are going to do. And this is, let's say, the arch different arch architecture, different models that we are going to deploy. So first, we have. Uh, we go from the causal model, let's say, to the more electrical part, the whole simulation, the scale and the use case, and we have these feedback loops that we are running all the time. So I'm going to try to explain each one of the components of this DRA. <clears throat> so first, we have a scenario definition and we have several uh, aspects that we wanted to, to include. So we have a taxonomy of intervention and a taxonomy of energy services that we wanted to consider. Then we have the techno-economic pro, uh, projection of technology and costs in order to uh, know, I mean, uh, in a year by year or a five year, five years basis, uh, how things are going to change, if the decision are going to change depending on these changes or not. Then we have the energy behavior profile and their distribution that we are currently building. So this is just a, 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 a guess that we are assuming. And then we have the macroeconomic time series, the price signal, the climate and geographic information, and all this macro information that you need for in order to run basically the, the energy system. So, so from that ingredients, we go to the causal models. And the causal model is the first step, is just to decide the, for each uh, energy behavior profile, the energy profile, how they are going to use the energy, how are the control, the temperature preference, the transform model choice, I mean, all these. Uh, preferences that each people is going to take and what are the investment that they are going to do or not to do uh, for each one of the energy services. And they will get the information from the scenario and in this produce this description and, and preferences. And then we have the uh, sustainable assessment model that is just a, a, a tracking device that we have are going to put there in order to, to, to get the information from to estimate the KPIs at the end. Okay, so it's just across the board, just 
Reminded that we need to get this information all in all places. So then we are going to have the, this non controller energy. This is just uh, the prediction of how much energy we can extract from this location or from different locations. And it's just using the geographic and climate information to get what amount of energy you could get from there. And then we are going to make the simulation. Uh, I mean, we have the behavior and we have the investment. So we simulate what is going to happen inside the house. And we get two different things. It's the fixed load profile. I mean, it's the thing that you cannot move. I mean, for example, cooking, you are going to cook at 12 o'clock. So we are going to have some prefixed load there. But there is other loads that could be scheduled. For example, if there is a battery, if there is an uh, electric uh, vehicle, if there is a heating device, that could shift loads and this type of things. With this uh, load profile generator, what it's going to give us is, I mean, this is a load that you can move and you can have to complete it by that hour. And then we get to the home structure simulation that we're going to get all the previous information, the household description, the constraints, the the energy emission profile, the price signal, the fixed load, the schedule load, and all of it, those things, and just simulate the smart, the smart aspect of the household, the storage, the hayback, the lighting, the schedule, even the, the district heating, because what we are going to simulate is not just a, in this case, is uh, we are going to simulate at two levels, at a household level and an energy community level, where we have these community controls that will help several houses together, okay? Also to include also district heating and, and even probably uh, power to X that probably is, are not going to be feasible to be included in a house in a household uh, way, but it's going to be more in a district level. So when we have finished all of this, what we are going to get is a distribution of a, a final lot profile for each one of the behavioral uh, types. Okay, so we have. 100 of all of this distribution. And the idea is that then we get to the upscale and the upscale is just taking this distribution and say, okay, we need uh, 1,000 um, households of following this distribution. So we just use bootstrapping methods on this other uh, statistical methods to, to upscale this just one profile in order to create thousand or millions of whatever you need. And then we aggregate and we create this load profile that is useful for the uh, energy system models that where they just need this uh, uh, consumption profile per uh, energy type and also uh, the rest of the information that we carry out. So okay, we have several modes to be run. I mean, it's normally you don't run the entire simulation from start to the end because sometimes you don't make sense. For example, we have the first one that is the building size in loop. That is just uh, to optimize the size of all components at the household, the generation, the storage, the insulation, the power to X for each building, uh, uh, building uh, energy behavioral uh, profile, okay? So it's just, you don't need to go to the home infrastructure simulation. You just go to the behavioral and you run this loop in order to to get uh, all this information. And this is something that you probably don't do a lot in the profit of concept. It's probably going to do only in the smaller ones. Uh, for the biggest one, you are going to, to reduce, let's say, uh, the main result of the previous one. And then we have the intervention optimizer loops that go until the scale. And the idea is to try to optimize what are the relevant mix of intervention that could help to maximize the KPIs for each uh energy behavioral uh, profiles okay so now we need to reach the scale uh probably not upscale uh the point but at least to the home infrastructure and then came back calculate the processor results and the intervention and then we have the use case loop that goes till the end this is the one that i have presented before and the counterfactual loops that just reach to the end but you do two types of simulation one with an intervention and one without the intervention and then compare and, and mix the results. And this finished my presentation. So if you have any questions, I'm open to answer it. 
we had a we had a question from Ulrich in the chat, and Ulrich, you are now uh, should be able to unmute yourself if I see yes. it correctly. Then you can ask um, the question yourself. Yeah, correctly. Uh, thank you very much for the for the presentation. Um, I had a question to I think it's slide eight uh, and the design of these persons and actors and how they're related to the um, to the the upscaling of the profiles afterwards. Um, because for me, like from the description, and that's what I didn't catch, uh, is they are all kind of informed and, um, yeah, in my opinion, biased actors. So they all have either an interest in energy or policies, and and also, um, yeah, like from just from the description. And I was wondering if there are not other persons missing which do not have anything to do with with the topic, um, and then. Afterwards, I don't uh, catch it how these persons are then uh, linked to the um, the user profiles uh, you've been mentioning for the, the upscaling afterwards. Maybe you can clarify a bit on that. No, I mean, there is two different things. The personas are the person that are going to run the models. I mean, they obviously are going to have a, as a natural person, let's say, uh, are going to be being one of the group of the uh, behavioral profiles, but there is not relation between all of two. I mean, uh, this person are going to be the user of, of, of the tool. For example, if you see the building size in loop, it's mostly going to be used by the max, that is the, the person that is in the, um, uh, in the utilities, because for okay. example, now in Spain, there is a program where uh, an utility is deploying um, uh, solar panels on each uh, house and they rent your roof, let's say. Mm -hmm. So they have to run this type of, of, of simulation loops. Um, now I, I assume that they just, assuming that you are not going to change your behavior, but I mean, it could be a problem if you are also the person that buy the energy for this uh, for this consumer because if they change your behavior at the same time you put the solar panel and you do for a lot of person uh, in your utility let's say mm -hmm. uh, then you market behavior to buy and sell energy it's going to change and it could be a complex things this is for example one of the things that the, the Goyenaire that is one of the partners of the project is, is quite interesting on knowing so this is, uh, let's say that the persona uh, is going to use this tool for this proof of concept, for example. Uh, but for example, uh, Alex and Andrea, that are more citizens. They would like to know if, okay, uh, should I buy a, a PV panel? I mean, it's going to be good for me. Uh, I'm going to take the right decision if I do that. So they could use this tool in order to, to, to use a simulator, probably it's a little bit overkill, but I mean, uh, they, could, uh, they could use it in order to, to know if what is going to happen for them if they do certain things. Okay, okay? I understand. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. This is answers your question? Yes. Okay, good. Nives, I think you have to raise hand. <laughs> Yes, I just wanted to, to follow up on, um, on this uh, last question because uh, uh, I'm particularly interested on in the heterogeneity of population since you said that uh, the, um, all the models will be useful to understand also um, how uh, and in, um, in which extent uh, there might be some particular investment in a particular area or a particular uh, energy consumption profile, but I'm particularly interested in to, um, uh, to understand how you model heterogeneity in behavior, apart from the personas that are the, the different roles in the society somehow. Uh, but yeah, Alex and Andrea in this sense, uh, uh, perhaps are uh, all the citizen category, but within that category, there might be still some heterogeneity. So I would like to understand how you model these inputs. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, because yeah. even though you use boot, bootstrap and then you simulate thousands of population, I mean, it, it depends on which inputs you, you, you insert at the, at the beginning, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so just uh, that clarification, if you can, uh, thanks a lot. Yes, yes, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the, 
the slide that was like, okay, come on, I need to improve this one. <laughs> so, I mean, the energy behavior profile is a different thing than the person, okay? And this is something that I have should have clarified. So what we are going to do is to, uh, we have like 30,000 uh, lot profiles from more than two years of different people from the society that we don't completely know too much about them, okay? So what we are trying to do is to cluster them and say, okay, you are, uh, every day you, uh, your profile is just like this one. You have a peak in the morning and a peak in the, in the afternoon. Or you are in the morning, don't consume anything and you always consume on the night. Or you are a flat profile. Or you cons your cons energy consumption during the week is almost flat, or you are not in the in the weekends, or you are only on the weekends, or in summer you consume more, and in summer you don't consume more, and this type of thing. So we are looking to the your any year behavior, okay, without knowing anything about your socioeconomic profile, okay, just how okay how do you consume energy. The best idea is to try to know this one, taking care of all the energy in your household, okay? Ener uh, thermal, electrical, and transport form of energy, let's say. At the moment, we only have the electrical ones, and we are in the process of creating, let's say, trying to create synthetic load profiles from the uh, ETUS uh, data sets, the time of use uh, data set from the European Forum Eurostat in order to also consider other aspects. But I mean, the idea is that we, we are running a very detailed uh, clustering algorithm to try to say, okay, you are this person that we don't know too much about the socioeconomic profile. You are a person that consume uh, a flat consumption during the day and a flat consumption during the week and a flat consumption during the year. So, okay, you live in your house. You are almost all the, all the time in your house. You don't go abroad on weekends and you don't usually go uh, on vacation. Most probably you are a retired person. So this is the, we are trying to do this kind of linking. Okay, so we are now in the process of creating these clusters, see what cluster exists, what cluster do not exist. Okay, and what are the future clusters that we can have, okay? And at the moment we have running this, uh, I mean, from a data set from, um, from London, and it's going, it's starting to appear uh, what we have expected, that there is two big, two big cluster, that is the one that uh, have these two uh, peaks, one cluster that only have one peaks and one cluster that don't have peaks at all during the, the, the day. And then we have the ones that uh, that have a high consumption during the night, that is also relevant. And then we have this type of weak weekend uh, behavior and this type of thing. So things are starting to, the pieces are going to, to be put there. And the idea from this point is that later on, we wanted to do these two maps that I have said before. From the energy behavior profile to the socioeconomic profile, and we are in the process of, of getting this information, but we are going to ask people uh, to fill a survey, and the idea is that they should answer some question or provide us the lot profile in order to, 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 to try to build this map. And also we are trying to we are going to try to use the ETUS uh, survey, uh, the time of use survey that have the socioeconomic profile to go to the previous to in the other in the other way around. And the idea is that we wanted to include this information into the causal model. I mean, what is your energy behavior profile as a main variable? Most probably it's going to be one of the, the main uh, stronger variables in, in the in the causal diagrams in order to decide, okay, if you are in a socioeconomic profile that is uh, of type three, that is that you are uh, at a flat energy consumption during the day and a flat energy consumption during the week. Uh, this is going to have a strong, more uh, almost sure and strong links to a lot of things that the investment decision and to a lot of the, the impact that the, this investment decision are going to have on you and this type of things. But I mean, this is how we plan to 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 separate things. This is 
clear for you, Nives? Yes, yes, definitely. Thanks a lot. No, it's really crucial this two-way uh, mapping because then really by having also information from uh, the real world, then you can really have predictive power uh, from uh, your modeling. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Nive, for the question. Is there any other question, Heike, or any, or any more time? There was one raised hands from Lara. Um, maybe Olivia, if you could allow her to ask her question, if that's possible. Lara, you are allowed to talk. Um, I know how it sounds, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if it's Lara. This is Eva. Hi. <laughs> ah, okay. We have uh, it's written Lara in the. Oh, she sent me the code. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eva. Then yes, go ahead. Um, just one question: um, How is change built in the profile? Um, thinking from the perspective of municipalities, if um, you know, within a year you do, let's say, um, retrofit of your property, or if the um, um, the weather changes dramatically, is that going to be included in the model? Uh, climate change uh, should be included uh, in the macroeconomic aspect. I mean, uh, one of the main variables that is going to be also inside the um, the causal model is going to be uh, the weather. And as we are going to repeat the, the investment decision, are not only taking at the start of the simulation and that's it, it's going to be repeated every five years or we have not already set the, the time step, let's say to run the, 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 um, uh, the energy system model. Uh, we can reconsider that uh, investment decision, taking into consideration the, the projection that, uh, that the weather projection that they, they could put. Uh, one of the things that is probably important to include there, and we wanted to include it there, it's the stream uh, weather. Uh, as you know, I mean, in Spain, we have an extreme weather event this year, and in Texas, <laughs> they are now recovering from one. Uh, and this is something that is uh, quite important in order to, to make household, I mean, decision on household normally are taken uh, under that uh, string weather. Uh, and I mean, if they have a bad, very bad uh, experience, they are going to change their, uh, their mind and their mental process and they will take investment decision or, 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 or the other way around, not take a decision during that uh, because of that weather event. So yes, definitely this kind of, uh, of things we are going to include into the, um, into the assessment because I think that those are quite important. This answers your question, Neva? Um, yeah, partly, yes. <laughs> what part is not answered? Mm, well, macroeconomic time series, I think is one thing. And the other thing is, um, from the point of view of, uh, let's say, the profile of the everyday people, um, if they're interested in, um, you know, having a look into, okay, we're going to change our heating system, um, and that takes less than a year. Um, the question is how how would if they could be able to use um, the tool that's um, Ah, yeah, this is what should be this for, okay? Yeah. Um, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if this tool is the right tool for what you are explaining. Uh, we could discuss it uh, because as I don't know, uh, or at least we have not think about uh, changing too much the climate scenario in this tool uh, for Alex and Andrea, let's say, to be changing, let's say, the this macroeconomic uh, macro macro scenario, not macroeconomic macro weather and geographical scenario, uh, because it's entering into the expertise of something quite 
more skillful than Alex and Andrea, but this is something if you think there is going to be relevant for Alex and Andrea to explore what is going to happen uh, in a climate mitigation action, uh, yes, it could be discussed and included. Yeah, I think it's interesting on um, not only on the single household level, but also community um, level. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know if any more questions. I don't know, see anyone. No, I no? don't know. I don't see any hand as well. Okay. 